All right, so welcome to the Forge Coffee Break. This, sorry, our left platforms, Coffee Break, formerly Forge. Um, thank you very much for joining. Um, this is a, usually, usually, as usual, this is a very open space for any questions or topics or projects that you're working on. And uh, this week actually is a unique one. We are here hosting the Sao Paulo Accelerator with the Sao Paulo database that went, uh, that was uh, on Monday. But the rest of the week, we're here with the people in Sao Paulo. Um, they're just coming back from lunch, so I will show you the room uh, in, a, in a few more moments. But uh, as usual, let me start with you. If you have any questions or topics or projects that you are working on, uh, yeah. open your microphone. <clears throat> very, very glad to have you here. So let yeah. me hand over to you. If you have any questions or topics, time. Mm -hmm. um, I have uh, actually um, two questions. Uh, one of them regarding... Um... The 2D drawings, basically when we do measure, if we can save them to the database, so if we load the URN of that viewer again, so you could see them. And the other one, how to the easiest way to make point, add point to the 3D viewer. So basically most, uh, you know, company now, they moving to commissioning, building their own platform. So basically when you want to assign a task for, for, let's say if you have a duct versus a beam, so you just want to add a, add a comment on this, so I just want to link it to the 3D viewer. Uh, so I'm not sure what is the best practice if we can if we can use Forge uh, the event listener. Okay, so let me me start with the first question you mentioned. Right, you are, um, um, you want to uh, link to a specific 2D view on a model. I guess, right? Yeah, so 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 basically you have the two D model, right? Uh, two mm -hmm. D sheets, and then you do some measure. You do some measure mm -hmm. on it. And then those measure okay. as long as you refresh the page or something, they disappear, right? So I'm not sure if there is a way we could load them to the database and then there is an event in Forge Viewer. So when you load the same URN, you can load the, the measures you already made before. Yeah, I don't think we persist the measuring uh, gizmos, right? So when you when you are measuring, you're actually touching on two points and creating that, that um, temporary line there. Right? Yeah, but so, uh, though that that is drawing canvas, but I'm not sure if we keep that in the database, or at least we don't do it on our side. Yeah, we, I can handle it on my side if there is a way to access that, and there is a way to fire an event when you load the the same viewer. Let's say we can detect it by by specific URN for for that mm -hmm. viewer. Okay. So technically, I'm I'm just trying to fake Bluebeam or like those Acrobat Reader. So when all those people, they want to do measurement for area and they want to do some mm -hmm. costing because they pay a lot of money for those uh, sub uh, software, whereas or, or all of it, it can be done by, mm -hmm. by Forge or uh, BIM360 because you can provide all the... Yeah, so I'm looking here. I don't think we First is that if, if you're clicking on a screen and drawing some you no know, gizmos for the measuring tool, right? That is yeah. definitely a way to redo that through the API, right? Because when you click on it, you're, you're actually just clicking the mouse input and then drawing that in the screen, right? Um, exactly. So it, 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 um, the, the, there is a way to do that. Um, I, I, what, what, I'm, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm trying to figure out is uh, how hacky that will be. Um, I haven't seen anything like that. Um, I'm wondering if anyone else here done have done anything around those lines, you know, restoring the measuring gizmos after you restore the drawing. If anyone else has done something like that, I would be. Yeah, so uh, Milton, you were saying about uh, the markups. Yeah, so the markups was originally, the extension was originally created and designed for that. So it does, uh, generate an, an SVG out of the markup. So it, it was intended for that, right? So I don't think we have intended to, to restore the measuring gizmos. So that's why it's not you know, easily exposed. Um, and I would say that, you no, know, it should be possible. It's just a matter of how, how much code you have to do to hack around the measuring extension. We, we, okay. lost, you in the, we lost you in the beginning of that answer. You, you froze up for a second. Uh, yeah, Sorry. so I, I'm yeah I'm I'm saying that um, as we do that on the UI, right? Um, there mm -hmm. is a, there is there is there, there must be some API there, and the viewer is I'm sorry some some functions for it, right? 
and the view is JavaScript. So the, the whole code is, is mostly exposed because of the JavaScript library on your client, right? Um, yeah, exactly. And it's probably a measure of how much work you have to do and how hacky that work would be because we don't have a public API for it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I was asking if there is an SDK or public API so you can extract the XY, the X, XY, yeah. you know, the point. So you can just, you, you store it to the database right away when you, when you, when you, when you apply your point in certain line or, or something so I'm else. Learning, so, yeah, I'm learning as we go. So I see there is a measure extension and there is a get measurement list and there is a get set measurements. So that mm -hmm. could be a way for it to start. Okay. Uh, I haven't seen, I haven't, uh, just to be honest, I haven't looked at this uh, measure yeah. extension before. So maybe so I'll just take a look. Yeah, probably that's yeah. where you should get started. Yeah, exactly. Um, I can look at this. Uh, so maybe if there is an event, when you load the viewer, it can call this method and it can retrieve all the measures from the from database. Uh, I, I can make it and then it will place the point again. Yep, that's pretty straightforward. Yep. Yeah, there's actually great. a blog post on this. Oh, Sorry. really? I didn't know. Uh, yeah. Uh, the area measurement tool. <laughs> that oh, would be great a, if you... markup. Yeah, it's very similar, but it's different. Yeah. But it technically, most of those, uh, the, the 2D, they need to be made in Revit just to make sure that the, the measure uh, <laughs> in the right scale, scroll right? Down. Yeah, scroll down for me, Augusto. Yeah. So it just sort of shows you how you retrieve it from a database. Um, yeah, exactly. Store markups and create them. Yeah, yeah. It would be great if Augusto can paste it in the chat so I can sure, also look course. at this. And then, um, yeah, I think the that I was, I was thinking that could be a bit hacky, but no, it's already there. Thank you, Mike. No, it seems straightforward. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I haven't, I haven't tried anything regardless uh, this, right? So I just want to ask before try to hack around and read. So maybe there's something straightforward. Luckily, there is something. And the last things, as I was saying, in the commissioning, right? So all those apps around, like for instance, a ACC or like a lot of apps around to do like a uh, business commissioning. Uh, so basically, they have a 3D viewer. They need to assign a task. Someone read it, and all of it, like it could done by my side. But the only things that the easiest way to assign a point to the 3D viewer and then to load it after afterwards. I mean, there is something in uh, Ford or Ford uh, data visualization. I'm not sure if this is the easiest uh, or the best practice I should follow. You you wanted so, to use BIM 360 issues API, um, is that right? No, I'm just, I'm building standalone uh, uh, product uh, on top of uh, platform and services. So basically I'm using the, the Forge viewer and then someone, okay. let's say, has a 3D model and then upload it, translate it, and then he want to just assign a point, right? Because there is an issue, clash, something on the side. So just for uh, assign a task, let's call it. Yeah, there is, uh, there's two options. If, I'll share your screen really quickly. Um, so if you are doing, um, if you're using BIM 360 um, or, or, or ACC, then there's a dedicated plugin to, um, take the points out of BIM 360, the issues and RFIs and place them on the model. But if you have your own database and maybe you want to place your own markers, maybe the yeah. IOT sensors, yeah. Um, yeah, then the, um, the place to, to get started is, I'll just go back to this. I believe this has been updated now. Oops. Yeah. Let's just start. So data visualization, um, you go to documentation now. This has been updated a little bit. So now it points to a, a simpler example. I'll just use um, this demo link here. And so this, this is a, a simpler example where you can um, just let this finish loading. Um, yeah, where you can place new markers and um, um, yeah, it'll retrieve them from a database, which is, you know, other people have been adding points. Uh, yeah. It's using just a simple toy database on, in the yeah. back end. But this is that, maybe that's the example you're looking for. Yeah, this is the easiest way. It could be like linked or set of points, I mean, by the URN ID, uh, right? So when you load the same model, you can retrieve the point you assign them to the specific model. You got it, exactly. Yeah, have a look at the, yeah. it's a very s small and simple um, yeah. sample code. 
it's just really just four extensions. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I I have done uh, build a couple of IoT projects for some some you know some few months, but um, it just I'm try I was trying if I should follow the same method. Uh, you know, just a, a, a performance issue. So that's what I was thinking. Uh, so. I just I don't want to re-render the application every time we place a point. So I was saying if this is the best practice I should follow. So it seems so. Yeah, this is cool. this would probably be it. Yep. Great. Thanks, Michael. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for that. Thanks a lot. Interesting topic. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Uh, I guess uh, I was looking for the the third log of authentication. One of the screenshot. Even I'm mistaken, or there is uh, a mistake in in the callback URL because in the third log authentication you keep uh, adding the localhost 800 uh, 8080. I'm not sure if we should be in Grok or something else, or I misunderstand it. Yesterday I was looking at it and I thought maybe some mistake, or maybe I misunderstand it. Sorry, in the what third, is, uh, you, you... go ahead. In the third log authentication. In the documentation, uh, there is one of the screenshots in the callback. There is localhost eighty eighty. So, uh -huh. as as I know, it's supposed to be like some you know something global, like Engrok or something else. Or when you well, yeah, when you yeah, when you do, go ahead, go for it, Augustine. Sorry, no, nope. Michael, please. Yeah, you go. <laughs> <laughs> you go. I'm shy now. All right. Um. So so for the when you're doing three three legged authentication, um, you will need you'll send a request to authentication services with your client ID and scope and a callback URL. And that URL, um, you're sending that to your browser on your machine. So the computer that's at, on your you know, your laptop. And that that laptop or that com that browser is gonna look at that command and it's going to, um, the browser is going to execute that command and it's going to send that request to authentication services and authentication services will return back a, uh, a redirection and it's yeah. going to control your browser to go to that new web page to log in. Yeah, exactly. And you'll log in. Yeah, you'll log in and then same thing. It's going to, once you're finished logging in and it's successful, the browser is going to be redirected to whatever the callback is that was specified. And because it was local host, your browser is going to redirect to um, local host port 8080 with the access token results or the code results. And that's going to jump into your local host server. Yeah. And so that's how, that's how that works. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to redirect that result to a server that's not on your computer, your laptop, then you can use a callback to a, 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 maybe a remote server. You would use um, you you would you would give it a callback URL to that remote service. Say it's ngrok, and then ngrok will then jump into your computer wherever your um, VPN that that ngrok uh, VPN session is. So that's 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 the purpose of ngrok. It's to it's to um um so that example is just to show you you can use local host where it's on your own computer or if you want to use um um at like a, a proper dns address that's not local mm -hmm. host you can use ngrok to bounce through a proxy that yeah. makes sense yeah yeah cool yeah i hope that's a bit more clear now uh yeah uh before we move to more questions from you. Um, quickly want to share something that we are planning for early next year and um, maybe have some feedback on it as well. Uh, maybe six months ago, we announced that we're going to change the DWG translation to use, um, we essentially is using smart PDF in, behind the scenes, uh, which is more compatible. Uh, we don't, we're not using anything internal anymore, right? But using you no know, industry standard, so that's one change. The second change is about extracting less profit, meaning that uh, it's optimized. Uh, we are understanding that lots of users and applications developers like yourself are not using all of those profits, so there is no real reason to extract all of that. So uh, here's an example. 
uh, it's a circle. And uh, you see on the left how it is today and on the right, how it would be uh, early next year. You see that the geometry section is not there anymore. That is uh, the, also the general section is a bit smaller. So um, would that affect your application? Is that something that concerns you? Something that you'd like to revisit? Uh, do you need the geometry data? Do you need more data that's not in here? Um, please provide feedback or contact us. And maybe the most significant, significant difference is that when you translate the same module before and after, the DBID is also different, right? So let's say you have a DWG today, and the, although not supported, you are using the DBID to map to some you know, other database or some other source, right? Instead of using the external ID. But if you're using the, the DBID and you translate again the same module, that will have a different ID. So if, 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 that, if that affects your application, please contact us, let's, let's explore. Um, and the last one is about uh, how you view those DWG files. So um, today, this white area that you see here is a bit bigger, but now it's, it, it represents the boundary of the DWG file. So that's how big my DWG is. Uh, it's more like a visual representation of the DWG that is also changing. So again, does it affect your application? Do you rely on DWG output or visual um, representation on, on, on your application, something that could affect your application? Uh, again, contact us, aps.help at autodesk.com. I'd like to hear more from you. So this is, should be coming shortly. We start with ACC and eventually rolling out for Game 360 and um, uh, application, like when you call a post job from your application. Um, Augusto, is it just 2D DWGs or what about 3D DWGs? Just 2D. 3D remains the same. So this is essentially, uh, the majority of the DWGs are 2D. And uh, in this group here, you also include, you can also include the 2D sheets from Revit files. They're also uh, using PDF. That, that's going on for a while now, since Revit 2022. Uh, they, 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 there, is, there is no change in profits. The change in profits is just for DWGs 2D. But yeah, Jim, this is 2D only in this case, yeah, uh, or 2D uh, views. Can I ask, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, it's a bit hard to understand you who's talking. Let, let, um, let me connect the mic. Um, better. Is it Jonathan? Oh, it's better yes. now, yes, go ahead. Um, so this 2D um, the view that you're talking, is that also a, a, the 2D views that are published from Revit models or it's, it's it's just uh, DWGs that's been translated. Yeah, only DWG just translation. DWG. So, yes. So we are re okay. extracting for DWG translation, right? We're extracting less profits, different DBIDs, and different uh, out visual output with this yeah. gray yeah. area around it. But and only so the DWG translation. So F2D files that the translator puts out go away, replaced by PDF. Okay. Yeah, to be clear, it's called smart PDF. So the difference mm -hmm. between, I guess, a standard PDF and a smart PDF is those, all of the IDs, those DBIDs are associated with the circles and lines. And so that way, if you have, um, let's say, a, um, a door with a, a door handle, then the DBIDs would be associated with the, the outline of the door as well as the door handle. The number would be the same. It would be grouped together. Whereas a PDF doesn't have that extra information. And so essentially we're, instead of using the internal format F2D, which is this sort of internal yeah. proprietary format, we're now using the standard PDF format, but with this extra ID information inside. And so now we've, we've normalized, um, we can now use PDFs um, directly um, and replace this proprietary format with open format. So can I ask a question? If we're uploading 
DWGs from on-prem. Um, and they have XREFs and things. Would we be, just to be used, on, this isn't BIM 360. I know not a blessed thing about BIM 360. It's, it's new to me. So um, would we be smarter to create these smart PDFs on-prem, like using AutoCAD, um, and publish those? Or should we rely on uh, having this done when, with the with the uploaded uh, DWG? So this this is for module derivative, not for AutoCAD uh, export oh, oh. feature. Oh, I understand. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Okay, what... yeah. So I, I think you're talking about plotting to PDF from AutoCAD, right? Right. Right. Yeah. So this so is, this is not affecting AutoCAD desktop. This is affecting module derivative as part of APS. Got it. So if I just if we're just using uh, BIM 360 to do collaboration on uh, DWGs that are created on prem, but we want someone out in the cloud to see it and mark it up, etc. Um, we don't have to care about this really because we're not no, going to. This use will it. affect right. This will affect because you are uploading a, a DWG mm -hmm. to BIM 360, right? So yes. DWGs uploaded to BIM 360 and ACC will all have this feature. We are starting with ACC and they eventually move into BIM 360. But every oh. DWG uploaded, every new DWG uploaded to ACC and eventually BIM 360 will be using this smart PDF translation pipeline. I see. And markups that are done by the, the BIM 360 user, are they going to be, are they marking up the PDF or is the markup something different? From from the user perspective, it's, it's right? When they layer. use the product, a, it, yeah. 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 So, it's, sorry, it's a layer. On, so from, it's, yeah. It's a layer that's separate from the PDF. Those markups aren't part of the PDF. They're this, um, yeah, they're just like SVG elements, if you like, on top of the PDF. And then oh, those SVG elements. Um, a fed, uh, 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 added together only in the browser. Okay, and do I have access to them via API from on-prem? Like, can I? I don't. I don't have to even bring them back, whether they're SVG or whatever. I just need to know that they're there, and then point the on-prem user to it so they can take action. So, if someone goes in and does some markup, is there an easy way for me to either poll or get called back when? creates a markup on one of these? There's no easy, uh, well, let's see. Um, if, yeah, if you wanted to, let's say you added a comment in BIM 360 on a, on a PDF, on a, a DWG drawing, and you're looking at it in the browser, and you're looking at the DWG in the browser, which is really smart PDF, and then you draw some text on that, on, that, mm -hmm. on top of that, some markup. That markup is stored in a database in BIM 360. Yep. Now, if you go back to your desktop, you're still looking at the you're looking at a DWG file, right? You're not looking at a smart PDF with markup. So you, you're looking at that DWG file again. Um, we no, but I can look. I can look at the cloud. I can look at the thing that I uploaded. In, I can I can look through the API. So I'm doing this in code, right? So yeah. on prem, yeah. I, I want to be able to say, can I go through the API and say, hey, there's uh, are there new markups on the DWGs that I've uploaded? That's what I need to know. Can I? Go can I? Yeah. No. I was, I was just, just about. Yeah. I was just about to get to that. So, <laughs> um, so, so you've got your DWG and you're looking at it in AutoCAD, and now you want to use the APIs to retrieve those markups that were done inside the BIM 360 database. That SVG, that, that text. Yep. Um, there's no. We don't have an official API for retrieving that, um, but it is possible. Well, I don't even need to retrieve it. I just want to know that somebody made one, and then I can. I can launch that. I can send the user up to do the whatever they have to do in the cloud, and they can make their changes back in the original CAD drawing on prem, and then we'll republish it, right? So this is a work we're doing a you know a, a synchronization workflow between uh, vaulted CAD users on prem and the people they're collaborating with in BIM three hundred and sixty, right? So this is a this is a yeah. So just product. just to, just to be very clear, right now uh, we're not talking about these changes anymore. We're talking about uh, markup feature Correct. in BIM 360, right? That's so right. Uh, I believe what you, what you can do there is to create a notification when a new markup is created and assign it to a user so they can make 
they, they, get a, they can get a notification about it, right? That, that, that's what we're talking here. Beautiful, because then and, I can have either the Vault job processor watch for that, or I can put a, a like, a, can, I, can I do like a web hook or something? Well, that's that's what Michael was mentioned before. We, as of today, we don't have an API for markups. Right. Okay. Um, so there is no API to get notifications or to even get that through the API. Okay. What Michael also mentioned is that if you uh, use some credentials, you can you user credentials, you can somehow get some of that information. But it's a bit hacky and no one walk around. We can we can discuss that some some other time how to do that that kind of approach. Yeah, good. But the is, markup API is not there. Is there a bit more to it? Because if I'm in BIM three sixty markups are really in BIM 360 attached to issues. So you're kind of looking at issues and it has not markups as an API, but you know, I'll call it redlining just to not confuse it from what we call markup objects, I guess. Um, you know, in, again, in BIM 360, there's the issues API and the way we handled markups versus in ACC, there's two APIs. There's the issues API and the markups API. Um, and the okay. markups API is a bit uh, work in progress. Um, so is Milt really going to have to wrestle both of those to the mat? Well, I'm, I'm not going to have to do a blessed thing. I'm going to send Christian Gessner to do it. But um, <laughs> I, I um, just, you have to have someone smart actually doing the code. Um, no, what I, I just if they're always associated with issues, um, can I just watch for the issue, right? I, I I need just to know. I, I take a bunch of uh, DWGs that are in a, a vault project folder, right? That a, an engineer back a house of a, a, a customer is working on, and they're going to take a, a set of those, put them in a folder up in the cloud, and they want their users to come and comment, right? Make markups or whatever. I just want to know: Can I watch to hear either by polling, you know, or whatever? to see that a markup was created. And then I don't even have to bring the markup back. I can just tell, I can just point the on-prem user back to the cloud and say, hey, you've got some markups, go deal with them, right? The, whatever, to read what yeah, they so say. So I think, Bill, you're, you're gonna need to look at, yeah, is, is it markups you wanna look at or is it issues? Or issues, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, let's, and, let's, and some let's, issues let's will have markups separately. and some won't. <laughs> yeah, so, so just j jumping back to this example, this has been 360. Uh, I've got a, a drawing in front of me and then I'm just using the markup tool. It's not connected with an issue or anything like that. It's just uh, it's just a simple markup. Now, if I wanted to retrieve this metadata for this markup, um, there is no API specifically to do it, but it is possible. It is a hack. Um, okay. And there's no uh, webhook system to tell you that somebody made that change. So you'd okay. be polling to listen for the difference. Well, I have a job processor sitting there in the back room that I could tell to do that if we if that's what we need to do um but if 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 the work if we tell the customer to change the workflow to say uh make an issue to to say now's when you want the person the on the actual owner of this drawing to make an act take some action then maybe we change their the customer's workflow a little bit i'm so, okay with that yeah Go so ahead. milt i'm going to suggest have chris make sure he looks at issues markups for both bim 360 and acc and make sure he's getting ACC information on not just what's today, but what's coming. And then you'll be able to make some reasonable Or do I decisions. put him on a plane and bring him to the accelerator in January and have him suit, sit there and do it there? That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. I mean, this is, this is for, I mean, it's for a, a, a major account. So the, we have the, the bandwidth to do it. And yeah. I think it's gonna come up more and more often, so. This is about coordinating vaulted engineers that are back at house with their customers that we want to connect through BIM 360. So I think this is going to be standard. Yeah. And if you're going to do that, we could make sure we got a BIM 360 ACC expert kind of at I'll, hand. I'll reach yeah. out and give you some details that I can't share, you know, publicly, but all right, cool. Awesome. That's yeah. hopeful. With that, yeah, with that, let me also, it's a good, uh, it's a good uh, point, right, Jim? Uh, we have an accelerator happen this week in Sao Paulo and by you know, first week of Jan February, we also have one in San Francisco and then in uh, Pune, India. So yeah, maybe that's one opportunity for you. Milton, you can you know, apply, uh, send the details, you can ensure that that is really possible. Have someone from that team working with you 
with your, with your team. And uh, San Francisco is coming you know, very, very soon. Yeah. I have a stupid question. So, can, a, can an Autodesk TSC uh, uh, come to an accelerator? Yes. Because yeah. we're, you know, we're working with the uh, major accounts team on this. And it's their customer, really, not my yeah. customer. So maybe. Yeah. So what, what the, the only thing that we really ask is for you to submit a project. So we know oh, yeah, yeah, the I, applications you want to work with. So we can ensure that it's either it's both possible and we have the resources to help you. So yep. yeah, that, that's the point to start. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, cool. There's any accelerator planning for Europe? I know there were someone something uh, planned to be in Copenhagen, but it's uh, been moved to Dublin. But if there is anything soon gonna be in Europe? Just for me, the issue, uh, the visa issues and stuff like that. So I would really like to attend one of the. Yeah, so it is it is on our list, but I don't have the date yet. But yeah, definitely sometime early next year we plan to do it again in and, Europe. And you, if you have a specific desire, because we've been going back and forth. Do we go to Gothenburg? Do we go to Stockholm? Do we go to Copenhagen? Um, and the answer could turn out to be based on where we can find a space that we can have yeah. for a week. Um, and, and we've been wrestling with that. So if you have any yeah. ideas, let us know. Yeah. Uh, how, how about the Tel Aviv office? Uh, that's uh, so far. <laughs> that, that's a long way from uh, even yeah. I'm from, even even I'm from Syria, which is like just uh, one jump, right? It's not that far, but I mean, yes. I'm, I'm based in Copenhagen, so so uh, so it's a little bit far. It would be yeah to, to flew to the. No, I'm just uh, I'm just way. saying that because there's there's a relatively big office here. Yeah, actually, in England, I remember two three years ago. I mean. In, it was a really great accelerator. There were a lot of attendees, yeah. and I remember we reserved three rooms to fit all of us. And uh, yeah, in, in, in Seoul, more. I guess you have a big office there as well. Yeah. If we're yeah go well, it, it, it's, it's on the work. Yeah, it's, it's on the work. Uh, I bet. So yeah, please please message us if you have any suggestions or like the space that you would 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 be nice to have it. So yeah, please share with us. That definitely helps. Of course, of course. Oh. Just for fun, so, it strikes me, um, we could probably do something in Turkey. We've got enough connections, and that's kind of pretty close. Yeah, there is a yeah. booming in Turkey in terms of BIM and Autodesk and implementation for digital transformation. I'm thinking there. some partners I mean, who got hookups with the yeah. local universities who might have appropriate space. Yeah. 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 That's but, but, yeah, but, but, but Jim, you, you got a great collaboration with Schneider Electric. You, I hear from some colleagues that you already made this uh, successful project called BIM Electric uh, or Elect BIM er Electrical. And as you know, like Schneider Electric got our offices are all around the world. I mean, I will try to push there as well. So it would be great, actually. Yeah. Because they are really looking forward to our collaboration, you know, with Autodesk. Anybody knows somebody who's got a good space for a week we can have that has good net internet connections. Great. Yeah. All right. So with that, uh, we're just a bit over time and uh, we are skipping the next uh, one, which is like, between Christmas and New Year. And uh, we are coming back with the coffee break. Same link, same time on January 11th, right? No, right. one week after the New Year. Yeah. So same link. We're just skipping one. Mm -hmm. And uh, see you then. Um, happy holidays, happy new year, and uh, see you Merry Christmas. early January. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. So, yeah. See you, see you ne happy next year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. See you, yeah. See you, you guys, in a year. Same link. See you soon. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Happy, happy new year. Happy holidays. Yeah. Happy new year. Happy holidays. Bye-bye.